So there are projects and then there are really fun projects and this is certainly the latter. What I'm trying to do today is recreate what was commonly called in the 16, 17 and 1800s a sack cart. Some would call it a hand cart. And it was used actually well into the 1900s and it's still used in parts of the world today. Where it gets his name is from ports. So in the 1600s, the world's becoming a much smaller place. We're, we're seeing trade goods coming from all the continents. They're moving across the oceans. The, uh, the ports of entry are growing exponentially in size. They need help, they need labor, and child labor is the cheapest. So <laughs> a child can't carry a sack, but he can carry five or six sacks in a sack cart, <laughs> and hence the name. So. And in my opinion, the wheel, if we think about it, um, as a child, I remember my teacher standing up there and saying, the wheel was invented by the Mesopotamian people. Well, yeah, that's a fact. But what they didn't tell us is that it was probably invented at numerous other places as well, probably independent of even seeing a wheel. So we, we see evidence of the wheel in China, in India, in Europe, in Eastern Europe. Uh, and in the time frame of between 4500 and 3300 BC. So anyway, I'm going to get at this project. I'm hoping to uh, get the body of it done today. I'm uh, going to get it in where it's warmed up. I've got a little more work to do on these beautiful wheels I found. And then I'm going to use milk paint to paint it. Should turn out pretty good. What a fun project this was. Um, so, and, and I love doing research. So I decided to use traditional paint. So I milk painted it. And through my research, I'm actually using colors that they would have used in the time period. Um, so one finished uh, hand cart or sack cart, whatever you want to call it. Also found out in my research that they, <laughs> the different companies that would use these, we think of it as the truck of the, 16th, 17th, 18th, into the 19th century, um, they would actually advertise on it. <laughs> so some of the first advertising. So perhaps down the road, I'll, I'll get some script out there and I'll do old English and I'll do Kelly's blacksmithing on it and envision my uh, apprentice going down through the village, taking the bits that we'd built for different clients and hinges and fixing parts and such. And anyway, it's a, uh, it's been a great project and it's going to be a functional tool. It's not just um, a reproduction of something that was used then. So I, I see a lot of applications in our gardening, uh, putting mounds of straw in it to uh, compost or to um, mulch the gardens, filling it with compost to compost the soil in the spring, harvesting potatoes, harvesting the cabbage, bringing firewood. Anyway, it's, uh, I'm very pleased. 
and its efficiency is absolutely crazy. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. If you spend any time watching The Woodland Escape, you'll know that I'm fascinated by little bits of history. Uh, but the story I'm about to relate is one that abs absolutely fascinates me. I find it absolutely amazing. So we're talking uh, 1856 to 1860. We've got about 3,000 new patrons who have joined the Latter-day Saints. And Brigham Young's got to get them, hit them from Iowa City, Iowa, to Salt Lake City, Utah, a distance of 1,300 miles. Now, the church itself has seen a couple of bad years with crop failures, and, and the church is all but out of money. So they got to cut back on their typical wagon trains if we think of, uh, you know, the Conestoga wagons being pulled by oxen. So Brigham Young comes up with the concept of hand cart companies. And over that four-year period, 10 companies are going to make that trek. Hand carts were slightly bigger than this, but not a lot. Uh, five people were assigned to each cart. Uh, they carried between 400 and 500 pounds, probably closer to 500. If it was a family with small children, they were covered. They'd have a, sort of like a covered wagon so the children could sleep and be out of the sun. And, and it went quite well. In fact, the cost uh, per person was about $13 to make the 1,300 mile trip with hand carts. And with oxen, it was $93. So there was a significant savings. The other thing is they could actually do it in 63 days versus 73 days because they didn't have all the livestock to take care of. But sadly, it ends up in a disaster in one year. In 57, two, two of the companies leave dangerously late in the season. And the ministers, they're all together and they're going, oh, divine intervention will protect you. Off you go. Uh, you'll be fine. Well, they weren't. So they get to Fort Laramie expecting to resupply, but there's no, re there's no food to be had. So they start to ration their food. They're trying to cover more ground, so they're starting to ditch stuff that they think they may not need as much, so blankets and coats and stuff that they're desperately going to need later. So in the, in the companies of hand carts, there's one tent, a common tent or public tent for every 20 people. Well, now they're getting separated and um, they get caught in, in deep snows in Wyoming. And sometimes the tents are ahead or the tents are behind. They're sleeping out in the open. Anyway, at the end of the day, um, 980 some souls started that uh, uh, in those two companies. And I believe it's 190 perished. And not a pleasant death, both from starvation, uh, hypothermia, basically freezing to death. And there were literally hundreds that lost fingers, toes, feet, entire limbs. So um, anyway, a fascinating bit of history about a piece of equipment that uh, uh, we're going to really utilize here at our homestead and within inside the forts of uh, the, the Palisade walls of Kelly Station. I'm going to put this thing away. Yeah, I think it's, it's worth protecting. I put a little bit of work into this.